Hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Danny Salman, Senior Market Analyst from Multibank Group. Um, in case you guys didn't know, we've been established since 2005, USA, California. And since inception, we've managed to increase our global presence with over 25 offices worldwide. We have over 280,000 clients and retail traders working with us across 90 different countries. And uh, we pride ourselves by being one of the few and globally trusted and regulated financial derivatives companies worldwide. Now, I'll be talking today about some key market trends moving forward into 2021 and sharing with you all some investment ideas and opportunities. 2020 has continued to surprise us. A year of pandemics, economic shutdowns, a global equity market collapse, one of the deepest recessions since the 1930s, and now all-time highs, recent all-time highs in the U.S. equity market. So we're going to take a closer look at the U.S. market outlook, and I'm going to use uh, the GDP, which is a primary indicator to track uh, overall economic health. As you, as you can see, in the minus uh, Q1, we see a contraction rate of 5%, following a, th a contraction rate of 31.4%, primarily due to the, um, global, the pandemic in the U.S. and the shutdowns, and a sharp reversal in Q3. Now, it's important to note that we are still in the recovery phase of COVID-19, and we might not possibly see the vaccine in full effect until later next year, so mid-2021 to end of 2021. Which brings me to my next point. COVID-19 has actually accelerated secular trends. And when I say secular trends, I speak about trends that are neither seasonal nor cyclical. They maintain a solid trajectory regardless of economic uncertainty. And so that's why I'll be presenting my point on investment strategy and point on high quality stocks and their performance during different GDP environments. Now, if you want to quantify high quality stocks, you quantify them by profitability, returning surplus cash flow to their shareholders, a proven track record of cash flow generation and positive ROE, stability, and of course, the flexibility to adapt in different market environments. So let's take a closer look at the chart. So as you can see, when GDP growth rates were above 2.5%, the S&P quality index roughly performed nearly the same as the S&P 500 benchmark index. A minimal difference. However, when we look at GDP growth rates below 2.5%, we see that there was a significant outperformance of nearly double an annualized return. And it's very essential to note that the yearly forecast for 2020, U.S. GDP forecast for 2020, is uh, predicted by analyst estimates and the IMF to be at a contraction rate of minus 3.5% and possibly even be even moving forward into Q1 to Q2. So as you can see, the quality index outperforms the S&P 500 benchmark index when GDP environment growth rate is low. Now let's take a closer look at quality companies versus mid to lower quality companies. As you can see, high quality companies have a lower annualized volatility. Now what does that mean? That means that they're less riskier than other com companies or stocks. And what does that create for investors and traders? It creates an attractive risk return profile by two factors. One of which is that you have an outperformance during low growth environments. And two, 
it's less riskier and less volatile. So let's take a closer look at the constituents of the quality index, or the high quality stocks. So we have the likes of Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, Cisco, Adobe, Merck, and Nike. And they're all tradable on our platform. And if we want to look at a quick se sector breakdown, the majority being in um, 40% in information technology and 22% in healthcare. Now, with all the potential returns investors and traders can make during low growth environments, it's also important to note that every investor and trader should always have protection on the downside. And that's why I move to my next theme. We speak about gold. And gold has always been, as you may all know, to serve as a safe haven economic, uh, safe haven asset during economic uncertainty. And gold, now, however, gold hasn't outperformed all traditional asset classes during different periods. However, it has maintained a competitive return profile in comparison to other traditional assets. The likes of uh, commodities, such as crude oil, natural gas, and uh, silver has outperformed them all on a 10-year, 20-year, 30-year performance range, and including emerging markets on a 10-year and 20-year performance range. And one, 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 one extra thing I would like to mention is that the annualized return from 1971 to 2019 for gold has been 7.65%. So clearly debunking any misconception that gold is a risky investment or trade. So now we look at gold's performance during different interest rate environments and we see that gold during a negative interest rate environment averaged a 1.2% average monthly return and during a moderate interest rate environment between 0 to 2.5% gold averaged a 1% monthly average return. Now we take a look at the forecast for 2021. These are my forecasts as well, moving forward. And based on other analyst estimates, we see um, gold trading around 2,200 to 2,400 range by mid or end 2021. And so just to recap, what are the fundamental drivers moving gold? As I mentioned before in the previous slide, low interest rate environment. The Federal Reserve will keep interest rates between 0 and 0.25% and in the years to come, a weakening U.S. dollar due to quantitative easing and monetary stimulus, and also to be proposed eventually, potentially, and target inflation rates set to increase in the years to come. Now we take a look at gold from a technical analysis uh, standpoint. As you can see, gold in the highlighted blue section, gold has a strong negative correlation against the S&P 500 benchmark index at negative 0.6, clearly showing its hedging purposes and its qualities. And the outperformance of the S&P 500 by roughly 7% have also sh showed, uh, showed you all uh, the FIB retracement. I took the data points to be the yearly high and, and low, and we can see a solid bounce of the 50% FIB retracement level, which indicates it to be a strong support. And another, another important indicator is the moving average, the 200-day moving average. It did not significantly break it, so reinforcing the bullish sentiment and uh, fundamental variables driving gold uh, as a trade and investment moving forward. And so, one of my, my next topic I'll also be talking about is some of the advancements and adoptions of technological trends uh, happening in our day and age. And with the likes of cryptocurrency, we have seen an acceler accelerated adoption rate of cryptos. And we have seen that with some fintech companies 
two fintech companies, which I largely attribute the recent surge in, in prices um, behind the uh, recent surge in prices. So you have Square buying $50 million worth of Bitcoin, nearly 1% uh, added on to their balance sheet in early October. And following that, PayPal allowing users to buy Bitcoin. So it's important to note that we have started to see some ac accelerated trends towards cryptocurrencies and making a more accepting means of transaction between people. And so I've also included an interesting chart um, for you all. Um, it's actually a survey, which I found interesting. So it's a survey conducted uh, among people across the globe in different countries. And we see a younger demographic or, or age, age group that are willing, that have transacted or bought and sold cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. And we take a closer look at the, um, the questions asked during the survey. Also, again, reinforcing the positive uh, insight of younger people towards cryptocurrencies and whereas older generations weren't quite accepting of the cryptocurrency. And so, now it, it's important to look at people's perspectives, um, but it's also important to know where institutional money is going. And that's where you identify longer term trends. So I've also had this chart, we've seen a rapid increase in the adoption of, of institutional investors with Bitcoin. I've added this chart for you all. It's a chart from Grayscale. In case you guys do not know, Grayscale is one of the largest crypto asset manager companies worldwide. And as you can see, the inflow in 2019 has been greater than that of 2013 to 2018 combined. And another important thing I would like to add is that 71% of that inflow came from institutional investors. So now, we're because there's always been a persistent question as to where are the institutional investors when it comes to crypto. So now we have somewhat of some empirical data that this is part of a longer term and more sustainable trend towards the future. It's also essential to know that we've moved away from the gold currency to the fiat currency. And now, with the recent trends and adoption rates, we could possibly see a new trend emerge moving forward into the future. And so, just to recap my presentation, one, outperformance of high quality stocks during low growth environments. Two, you investing in tra and trading in gold, serving as, its, as a hedge. And three, accelerated adoption rates of cryptocurrency, which may be part of a longer term trend. Thank you all. Excellent stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, Danny with Multibank Group. Now, I'd like to pitch it out to the floor. Are there any questions in the audience? If you just want to raise your hand, I'll bring the microphone over to you, and Danny will yeah. happily answer those questions. Any questions? Hi, Dan. Hi. So yeah, I was uh, willing to ask, like I heard that uh, now some banks are adopting uh, cryptocurrencies. Right. Now, do you think in the future also central banks, there will be forced to adapt cryptocurrencies? Thank you. Uh, thank you. That, that's actually a very good question. Um, you have the likes of the Chinese government as well looking into ad adopting digital currencies as a means of transaction. And uh, this has already been proposed. Um, but there's certain regulatory hurdles they must overcome first before we take on a full full scale adoption. But we can see, I think, I believe, if the some of the more major tech companies like the GAFA group, the Googles, the Amazons, Facebooks, and Apple start adopting that, we can see an even an even a more accelerated you know change and basically. Some people say the replacement of cash in the near future. So could could possibly be. Yeah. You're welcome. Any further questions? I 
Thank you. Uh, what is your expectation about the volatility of the cryptocurrency? It is very volatile. You cannot depend on Thank you. Thanks for the question. Yes, uh, it is volatile. But uh, what I tried to identify today was that we ha we're seeing a significant inflow of institutional investors coming in. And when we have institutional investors um, coming in to the market and investing in the likes of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, it adds that stability and sustainability moving forward. So we could possibly see uh, more or less a less volatile period of crypto moving forward. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that the 2017 spike, the breaking of all time high and the volatility would be the same as this year because we've seen an inflow of institutional investors.